Good morning, church. It's good to be together in the house of the Lord, though some of, most of us are watching it through internet or social media. Today, praise God, we have been able to start our services even in our sanctuary uh, in the Assembly of God Church in Kandy, 224 Peridania Road. And we will be having our English service every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, so we want to continue to you to come and join us, and we want you to be a part of what God is doing through our church. This morning, let's bow our hearts in prayer, even as we commit ourselves and say, God, you help us to worship you, Lord, this morning. Lord, we have had a week that has gone by. We have had many challenges. We have faced, gone through so many circumstances, and maybe at some points, Lord, we have done things that are displeasing to you. Maybe in our thoughts, maybe in our attitude, Lord, we have displeased you. Maybe in our relationships, Lord, we have hurt you. And I pray, Lord, that you will cleanse us. Shall we bow our hearts in prayer? And if you are with your family, just as a family, together, let's bow our hearts and ask God to just be with us during this service. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, Lord, we praise and thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because you have called us as a church to be an example to this nation, to be a spiritual family, Lord. Lord, in a time where a nation is going through so much of hurt, Lord, you have called us to be your instruments of love, of forgiveness, and Lord, we come to your holy presence this morning and we pray that you will cleanse our hearts, Lord. Lord, maybe we have said and done things that have displeased or hurt you, Lord. But we pray that you will cleanse us this morning, Lord, so that when we come into your presence to worship, we can worship you with all our heart, Lord. We can love you as, Lord, your children. And Lord, come and call Abba, Father, knowing that you hear our prayers. And you'll be pleased with our worship this morning. Bless this time together, Lord. Bless this service, Lord. And I pray that your presence will be felt in a mighty way. And Lord, I pray for a double portion of your Holy Spirit to be upon your servant who will break the bread of life today, Lord. Bless this service and we commit ourselves into your loving hands. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's join together with the worship team and just exalt and praise our God. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. Let's praise and worship the Lord. He's the Lord of Lords and He's the King of Kings. He's the unstoppable God. When He is with us, He is unstoppable. And we, we are unstoppable because He is with us. Let's thank, let's thank Him, let's praise Him, and let's worship Him with all of our hearts. Hallelujah. God. 
God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. You live. You live, you die, you rose again on high. You open the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all you done, you live. You live, you died, you rose again. Oh, I 
will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so He has been faithful. All my life you have been faithful, God. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the good. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived. In the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest nights, you are close like no other. I'm known you as a father. I'm known you as a father. I'm known you as a friend. All my life you have been faithful, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, Jesus. Oh, I sing you praise your holy name. So, oh Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, you have been so good, God. Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I'm so good. God until today. No disease has touched us. No plague, no curse has touched us. They thank God for that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
do you only ask for me and my house we will serve the Lord ask for me and my house we will serve the Lord ask for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will serve everyone joining us online welcome to assembly of god candy thank you for being with us today we are gra grateful to god that you are able to join with us before i forget i want to say this today we have started our services at our uh, at our sanctuary uh, so service times i want to remind you tamil service starts at 7:30 and 9 o'clock we have our english service and 10:30 we have our singular services so don't forget that uh, and we are wanting you to come back to church. Uh, we have taken all the precautions uh, that we can take. Uh, we make sure that uh, we have done our part and we want to see you very soon coming back to church. Uh, you will remember three weeks ago we started a series called Spiritual Family. And the first week uh, we took this famous verse uh, that Joshua actually uh, said, for me and my household we will serve the Lord. And from that verse we looked at as a father, what is the role uh, in our family, uh, especially to make a spiritual family? And then the second week we looked at, last week actually, from Proverbs 31, uh, we looked at the mother's role, and especially we looked at Moses' mother, Jehobed, and what role she played in Moses' life uh, to, to make him that spiritual giant. Uh, so this week we are moving into week number three, and uh, Today we are going to look at how we can grow as a spiritual family together. That's, that's what we are going to look at today. One day, my six-year-old daughter picked up a picture and gave it to me saying, uh, this is Appa. And I wish that picture she picked was a picture that she and I played in the park. And that, uh, we, that we have done that many times. I wish that picture that she, she liked was uh, to wash her. And, and occasionally, uh, I used to feed her. So one of those pictures. I wish that picture that she picked was a picnic that we have gone as a family, which we have done many times. Oh, I wish that picture she picked was a storytelling time between us. But the picture she picked actually surprised me. The picture she picked to show me what, uh, what, what represents uh, me got me thinking, in fact. It may be serious thinking and also to make some changes in my life. Do you want to see the picture she picked? Um, yes, I will show you the picture. The picture that she actually picked uh, was a picture of an angry man. So, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was quite shocked why she picked that picture. And then I realized that she remembers the most is how I made her feel when, uh, when I'm correcting her in anger. Probably that is what made the most significant impact in her. You know, parenting is the most important and the most demanding job God has given us. And, uh, you know, making a spiritual family is not something easy, but it's hard work. It's intentional hard work. I, 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 I hope you agree with me. What about you? What is the challenge you are facing in bringing up your children? If your, ch if your child does the same exercise, what, uh, what sort of a picture that your child would pick to represent you? Are you struggling to bring up your children in, the, in God's way? 
Some of you are like me. You have children that is very young and you have uh, still time uh, to invest into their lives and shape them in the right direction. Others, your children have become teens now and they are at the stage when you say something, they are always arguing with you. It's, it's difficult to get them to obey and you might be struggling with them. Some others here, you feel disappointed because your children have gone astray. They are not, uh, they are not with the Lord anymore. They don't want to come to church. You're praying hard that they will come back to God, but you feel helpless. There are others here, your children have grown up, uh, they, are, they are good children, uh, they are responsible, they are earning and they are looking after you, but they have lost their passion for God. And, and you wonder how to bring the, these children back to God. Today my question is, how do we parent our children in such way that our children will love the Lord? And even after they grow up, they will not depart the Lord. We, you know, we can find answer to this question in one of the ancient texts in the Bible. It's actually found in the first five books, which we call the Pentateuch. This, this text help, has helped many generations to live and bring up their children in the ways of the Lord. The text is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 9. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 9. These are the commandments, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing to the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord uh, your God as long as you live by keeping all these decrees and commandments that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Here is here Israel. And be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. And that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestor promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These are the commandments that I give you today uh, are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning that you have given us this opportunity to look at this ancient text that has helped generation after generation to build a spiritual family. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us from this passage. And Lord, this morning, show us, Father God, how we can make changes in our family so that we will move towards becoming a spiritual family, Lord. Father, we commit to this extent. Holy Spirit of God, you deal with us, you speak to us, and let you take over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How do we build a spiritual family in a way that our children will love the Lord? The answer to this question is given the text that we just read. Parents, God called us to live a Christian life not just on a Sunday, but every day to represent Him. He wants us to model that what, what it looks like to live a Christian life at home uh, uh, for our children to see. He wants us to walk the talk. And then God wants us to, you know, pass on this lifestyle to our children. I want to say a few things. The first thing I want to say is, we are responsible as parents for our sp ch children's spiritual lives. We are responsible as parents for our spiritual life. You cannot give this responsibility to anyone, for that matter, even to the church. You are responsible for your child's spiritual growth and spiritual life. The church is called to live as a community in God's way. And church will do whatever you know, possible to shape the children to move in this direction as a community. But the primary responsibility of, of the children's spiritual life lies in the hands of the parents. I want you to remember that. What are the responsibilities of a spiritual family? Well, actually, chapter 6, if you look at, verse 4 to 6 deals with our responsibility. 
in the great sermon that Moses is preaching uh, just before leaving he is if he's about to die these are probably his last words and he, if Moses declares in verse chap, uh, chapter 6 verse 4 to 6 he says hear o Israel the Lord is our God the Lord is one you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might Jesus you know when 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 a person came to Jesus and asked what is the greatest commandment in the whole Bible. Actually, there are 614 commands. And this question was asked from Jesus, what is the greatest command? Jesus actually quoted Deuteronomy 6, uh, uh, 4 to 6, this particular part. And he said, you know, the same thing that Moses said, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Right? So, it's a commandment to love the Lord God. Because, uh, the, you know, that is the most important thing as a spiritual family. A spiritual family's primary responsibility is to love the Lord with everything what we have. You know, this word love is today used very loosely. You know, we say, I love ice cream. I love cricket. I love to go to Peradeniya Gardens. We just say, I love everything. Actually, what we mean by that is, I like, not I love, but I like these things. So we we'll use the word lo love very loosely. But the love that is spoken here is a different love. It's a complete commitment. As, as your whole being is committed to loving something. That's why it says your, whole, your soul, your heart, your strength. It's a complete commitment. Everything in you, every fiber of you, you know, you need to direct towards loving God. And that's something as a spiritual family we need to cultivate. And how do we do that? And how do we do that? The family must learn to love the Lord God as, as our priority. As our priority. And how do we do that? And verse 4 here, it speaks that, Hear, O Israel. There is only one God. That's how it starts. Here, O Israel, there is only one God. And this, this, this part is called Shema in the Old Testament. Shema means we need to hear God's word. We need to keep God's word in our heart. And we need to obey God's word. So as a family, we need to constantly and, and continuously, we need to hear God's word. We need to also keep God's word in our hearts. And we also need to commit to practicing God's word in our day-to-day -day life, in our, in our you know, normal life. And that's what it means. So the Shema is so important. Jewish people, they repeated twice a day this particular part of the scripture in their prayers so that they will remember, they will not forget. So here, oh Lord, they, the Lord God is one. And, and if you look at the, the, the time that they lived in, look at the time that this, this, this scripture is written, the dominant belief at that time is many gods. And even in our nation today, we have 33 million gods, some religions. We have many gods. And everyone has a god. And God is saying here, no, no, no. Uh, there is no many god. I am the only god. You don't construct. God says, you don't construct me. I construct you. There is no many of me depending on you. There is only one of me and you are supposed to depend on me. I am real. You don't know me if you create me. Uh, you only know me if you discover me. The deepest need of our hearts is not a God that we invent, but a God we discover. And how do we discover this God? As a family, we need to take the scriptures and we need to start reading, meditating, uh, speaking about the scriptures. And when we talk about the scriptures together, when we discuss the scriptures together, that's where we discover God together and that's something so important and you can't love someone uh, whom you don't know love actually grows when you know the person more and more you know I love you because fill the blanks you need to know about the person how do we get to know about the person is when you spend time with the person when you understand the quality of the person when you understand the character of the person so it's so important as a family we, we are together the mother father and the children come together for discussions about God you know we are so used to hearing God's word when we come to church, we listen to God's word, we hear God's word. We are, there, you know, word is preached from the pulpit. We are so used to that hearing God's word. But there is an important, you know, hearing God is not going to transform us. Hearing God is not going to change our lives. What changes our lives is when we discuss God's word. And when we begin to actually, not just discussing God's words, we agree upon some things that we want to, you know, obey. And that's when change begins to happen. 
Church, I want to encourage you. If, if you come to church and you're listening to God's word, good, great. That's the first step. But that's not all. That you need to go back. When you're having your lunch with your family, you know, once again, bring the message that you heard that day and, and talk about the message with the children and get the children to ask some questions. How can we obey this this week? And come into an agreement together as a family how we are going to, uh, you know, obey God's word. These days we are doing something called Discovery Bible Study. That's something fabulous i would say and i want you to i want to encourage you as a family you need to start your family altar and for that this discovery bible study is a great way to go about where you take a scripture portion of scripture you read it twice aloud and then you ask one person to retell the story and then we ask simple four questions from the scriptures that gets into a discussion and you will be amazed when you hear your children what they have to say about the scriptures and and the insight they come up with so i'm encouraging to get into discussions uh, about God's word and that's the way that we will actually discover God and that actually leads us to get into a deeper relationship with God and I think that's something that we need to do and how can a family experience a growing love for God you know love grows through deepening understanding a better knowledge of the other person his thoughts and actions and 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 then expressing through through that through verbalizing that new discovery we need to get to know the person and then express that what we have got to know uh, we have to verbalize it uh, uh, the new discovery we have uh, got to know about the person i love you because i, I locked during the lockdown times I, I realized i love you god because you are always with me you know, you need to be able to fill the blanks. You need to be able to experience God and fill the blanks so that you have this relationship that you're building. So the love is, uh, that's to talking about here, is a relationship. Growing into a deeper relationship with God. And that deeper relationship, going, growing into deeper relationship doesn't happen, uh, you know, uh, in, un unintentionally. It happens intentionally. As a family, what is your plan to grow as a family in God? How do your children are hearing about God's word? How are, they, how are they discovering God? What is your plan? What are you doing as parents? These are some things that we need to think about. If you are not intentional about spiritual growth, it's not going to happen, parents. Listen to me very carefully. We need to work together. We need to work together to grow in love. You know, for that, I think first thing is we need to role model in spiritual family that is so important. Verse 6, uh, seven, and nine, 7 to 9, chapter 6, verse 7 to 9 talks about role modeling. It says, verse 7 says, you teach from your lifestyle. The way that we teach our children is the way we live. We need to, you know, walk the talk. Right? At home, the way we conduct ourselves, we need to always represent God. And, and you know, I'm not saying that we're living a perfect life. None of us are perfect. We are going to make mistakes. But when we make mistakes, we need, if we are representing God, even to our children, we should be able to acknowledge we have made a mistake. And that's where you are really showing God's way of living. You know, you, you have you got to be able to say, hey, I made a mistake. I'm sorry about that. You know, I said something I shouldn't say. I'm sorry about that. So children learn that from the parents, it is, living is not easy, but we are actually trying, we are, we are working towards becoming God's character, that character that God wants us to uh, become. You know, you shall teach them diligently to your son, verse 7 says. The idea of teaching children is repeated throughout this passage. It keeps saying again and again. The commandments were to be subject of conversation both inside and outside home from the beginning of the day to the end of the day in a summary the what, what this passage is basically saying is commandments were to permeate every sphere of our lives that's what it's talking about you know talk about spiritual things in your homes you know Moses stresses parents to talk about spiritual things in an easygoing conversational style the stress is not here to do formal teaching in other words bring the Bible we are going to sit we're going to study the word that's not what uh, Moses is talking about here Moses is talking about informal conversations that happens throughout the day. You know, that's what he's talking about. And it's so important. He doesn't say us to lecture them or beat them with the Bible. The idea is here a casual conversations uh, so that we can talk about God, the things of God. 
Uh, let, let, that, let that become part of your lifestyle. You know, we need to be ready to seize the teaching opportunity. It might be at the breakfast. It might be that time that you are taking the child to drop to the school. It might be at that bedtime. That, you know, whenever there is opportunity, we need to take the opportunity to talk about God. Now, don't force it down their throats. That's not what he's talking about. But on the other hand, don't be afraid to speak and seize the moment. You know, talk to them the way you talk about a cricket game that happened last night between Sri Lanka and India. Or, or, or about that, you know, uh, the, the rugger game that the school played. Or it's, uh, you can talk about like, you know, how that school uh, day went. Uh, you're having a chat with your child. How did your day go today? Uh, and how, what did you do in school? And in the same way, make the spiritual conversations also casual. Casual, so the ch children will like that kind of a conversation. Anyway, children like to talk to their parents. And when you begin to talk to them, they will. They want to listen to you. The key thing here is seizing the moments. Seizing the moments in life. When it says in this passage, when you, when you walk by the way, you know, uh, what do you do when you, uh, what do you, what do you talk about while you are in the bus or in the car where you are going to drop your child to somewhere? What do you talk to them? As you journey through life, observe people and situations all about uh, all about seizing the moment. Whatever you see, that, that thing that you can take and start a conversation and then bring it to God and say that, what do you think the Bible tells about this? How does Bible handle this matter? So that you will seize the moments to have discussions with God. And it says, when you lie down and when you rise up, probably refers to those quiet moments before you go to sleep. It's a good time to, you know, get into the beds with the children and, and just take a passage of scripture and just read out loud and just ask few questions. And so that it can be a conversation about God before they go to bed. And in the mornings when you get up, I, I, I used to, when, you know, uh, when I'm taking my son to school uh, back in Colombo, it takes about 45 minutes. And every day in the morning, that's the time that we have our Discovery Bible study. 45 minutes is, is sitting with me, next to me, and we talk about God. I get him to read the scriptures, he read out loud, and then we tell the story again, and we ask questions, and that becomes a great conversation, including a point to obey that day. And then we come back home in the night and I ask them, how did that obedience thing that you decided today go? Then he will tell me it didn't go well or did it go well. So it becomes another conversation. So these are the moments that we need to seize. Whenever we get the opportunity to talk about, you know, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, let's seize that moment to talk about God. That's so important. That's what Moses is telling here. Your life is an open book uh, to, to be read by your children. So we need to be very careful how we conduct our life. You know, there are times that I've seen even parents at home, like Christian, good parents. I mean, sometimes when they get a call, a difficult call they don't want to answer, they tell the child to answer the phone and say, I'm not at, I'm not at home. You know, this is, this is something that we are doing it, but I don't think we are thinking through what we are doing. We are telling our child to lie, and that's a, a lifestyle we are imparting into them. And we got to be very careful as a Christian parents, what are we telling our children to do? We need to make sure that we are talking to them always about God and how God wants the godly things and, and giving them that example of living by the scripture that is so important as, as we, uh, you know, work with our children on a day-to-day Day basis and then it says and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be fr uh, be uh, uh, frontal on your forehead you know Jew Jewish rabbis during the days of Jesus took this verse literally you know verse 8 they took it literally and tied uh, these are the little leather boxes in which uh, they place the scriptures uh, and and they write the scripture and put it inside and then they decorate themselves they they wear themselves moses is not talking about decorating ourselves with religious jewelry again he is emphasizing the need to continually teaching the word of god let's god's word be bound up in 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 all we do and we and what we think life is an open book that needs to be read by your family. That is, that used to be read by people around you, right? And then verse 9 say, and you shall write them on your, on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Uh, the misusa was a small box containing uh, a parchment of scripture. Uh, he's not talking about plagues around the houses or on the mailbox or, or even that sometimes the welcoming, the doormat also sometimes has a verse. That's not what he's talking about. Let the word of God be written upon your lifestyle. Let the, word of, uh, let the Lord demonstrate that his love is in your home. 
if you love the lord and demonstrate that in the fruit of the spirit you will be a winning parent that's what it's talking about we need to love the lord and we need to demonstrate the fruit of the spirit and if we can do that we will become winning parents now if your son and daughter comes and ask you you know why are you following god why are you obeying god why do you love god why do you go to church even on sunday why do you do all these things why do you give to church and what how will you answer you know i want to finish this thought with this thought you know families are held together by shared stories all families have their stories i know that we love to you know talk about our own stories when we come together as a family sometime you might flip that uh, album that you have and you will go through the pictures and talk about stories of how uh, those those memories and stories or you might even say about the grandparents where they come from uh, you know what they have done and so that the children will get a sense of where they are coming from what is your background stories are so important to hold a family together and you know live spiritual building a spiritual family is not a easy task in fact we all fail terribly but let me tell you one of the things that we can do to build a spiritual family is we need to share stories the stories that we are need to share in fact verse uh, chapter 6 verse 20 moses tells actually the israelites when your son or daughter ask about you know why are you following these commandments tell them the story what what is the story moses wants the jewish parents to tell his story he he tells the child the story of the good news at that time what we call the gospel right and what is the gospel in in in, in moses's time it is the story of god coming into history to save us by grace now the version of the story that this father uh, moses's time tells is of course the only one that they had at that time the most advanced version of the gospel that they had at that time which was the exodus story and exodus story is is we are told the israelites were in slavery and god broke into history with a 10 plague and mighty acts but now they when the uh, but now the 10 plagues were terrible judgment of god down on human sin the 10 plagues were actually a judgment day scroll forward temporarily and god brought down his judgment against human evil in egypt but how did israelites get out of that judgment that's the most important question because they are also humans and they are also sinful as anybody else and they were in egypt and when the angel of death came down how did they get out and the answer is the blood of the lamb you know before the law went on the door post of israel the blood went on the door posts because on the night uh, before the passover when everybody else first born was dying because of the judgment of god the israelites took shelter under the blood of the lamb they killed the lamb they ate the lamb and they put the blood on the door posts so that the judgment of god passed over where they were they hid under the blood and that is the answer at, at least as far as they knew at that time that's why they love god in gratitude for what god has done it's not a commandment it's not because you know god has commanded us to love him no it's the gratitude for what god has done he loved us first so we love him in return that is gratitude church you know why should you and i obey god if our children ask why do we love god what do we say the answer is not we obey the law otherwise god will punish us god will uh, uh, we, we obey the law otherwise we can't go to heaven that's not the answer we obey the law so that god will bless us not that's also not the answer you know god has already blessed us god already god has already saved us so we don't have to you know obey to get the blessing or the for that matter to even to get saved and and we obey god mainly because of gratitude hearts of gratitude we don't obey god uh, obey the law out of fear but out of love and gratitude before the law went on our door post the blood was on our door post and that is the reason we we can put the law on the door post because we know that god is for us and he has chosen us by grace and so the meaning of the law is god's intervention and his grace and therefore it's gratitude 
And if your children ask, okay, at that time that is true. But today, how can our sins be washed away? You know, you can always, as a dad, you can think for a while. And then you can say, yeah, I always wonder that myself. But John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus Christ walking alone, suddenly got it. And he said, behold the lamp of the God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist says, I get it. The lambs were just the example all this time. But here is the one. God himself came. God himself. God come to take the judgment. To absorb the death. And that is how you know you can trust him unconditionally. It is not enough just to say to your heart, well, that we are trusting and loving God because for what Jesus has done. It's the gospel story. You know, church, the gospel story is not only save us. The gospel story is what transforms us. And every family must tell the gospel story continuously. Every opportunity, the gospel story must be repeated. And that is the only way that we can build a spiritual life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day once again that you have given us the opportunity to come together as a family. Lord, we looked at how to build a spiritual family. And we looked at, Lord, that it is by talking about you. It is by, Lord, having conversations about you. It is also living, Lord, the life that you have called us to live. But finally, we looked at, it is, Lord, by telling that story, the story of the gospel, again and again to our children. As a family, Lord, so that we will understand greatly. Father, help us to, Lord, to do this. Every opportunity we get, Father God, so that our children will, Father God, grow into that, Lord, that grace, that gratitude. And, Lord, they will also become the children, the spiritual children who will not depart from you, Father. Lord, we pray your blessing over our families. We thank you once again for what you're doing these days, Father. Lord, we commit ourselves once again to you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Praise God for that great message that God has shared with us through his servant today. You know, it is the truth that will set us free. It is the truth that is going to bring absolute blessing, not only on our lives, but for our children, for families. You know, like the wise man. Let's be like that wise man. Build our house on that solid rock, which is God's word. Teach it to your children and to their children. Remember, you know, we have made mistakes. We would have sometimes, you know, as parents, as children, maybe we would have, you know, disappointed. Children would have disappointed your parents. Parents, you would have not been right to your children. Maybe as between husband and wife, you would have not been faithful to each other. But this is a new day. You know, Pastor Naresh spoke about the blood of Christ that can protect our families. And I'm going to pray that God will cover our homes, our families, with his precious blood this morning. And especially during this time that our homes will, will be protected by his love, by his precious blood. Shall we bow our hearts in prayer even as we bring this service to a close? Let's lift our hands and surrender our lives. Thank God for that word that we have received. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, let that word, Lord, that has been so clearly spoken to us, Lord, words that were spoken, Lord, to the nation of Israel, to your children. Lord, you have revealed it to us this morning. And Lord, I pray that word will find a dwelling place in every heart, life, and home, and family today, Lord. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with every family, Lord. And I pray especially that you will cover every home with your precious blood, and your blood availeth, Lord. I pray that you will give them victory today as a family, Lord to walk in that divine purpose, to that divine destiny to which you have called each family, Lord. May your blessing rest upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Remember, church has started. So we want to welcome you. Tamil service has started as usual at 7.30. The English service, there is a change. It's at 9 o'clock in the morning. So welcome to the church building. If not, please join us online and be a part of the service next Sunday. And the singular service starts at 10.30. God bless you. Have an exciting week. And see you next Sunday in church. God bless you.